So um, perhaps it's uh, better if I just speak now without uh, the presentation or it's better to have a slide uh, on, right? Yep, this should work fine. Hi, good morning, everyone. Hey, Rob. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning Elaine. How are you? Good. We're so glad that you're here joining us. Good morning, Bieta. Hello. 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 <laughs> Maria, I'm so glad you're doing this. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's just an honor, really. Good morning, everyone. We have about 50 people joining us this morning from all over the world, so thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. See, Maria, you're a big draw. <laughs> Do you have any explanation <laughs> for that? Because you're fabulous and we all know it. Oh, really? <laughs> Thank you. We're just going to give it a few more minutes, just let some other people join in. We have some people joining in now, and then we'll go ahead and get started in just a little bit. Oh, I see. I see Beata. Beata. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Look, we have Russia, we have Saudi Arabia, we have the Netherlands, and all over the U.S. Oh, it's fantastic. I'm so glad to see you all. So, how, how is uh, COVID in Krasnoyarsk, Maria? Uh, in Krasnoyarsk, uh, well, we had a very hot uh, uh, May. It was um, like 80 uh, degrees in Fahrenheit, uh, but uh, now it's a little bit chilly. And uh, I don't know if you can transfer it into Fahrenheit, but um, it's uh, about uh, 15 in Celsius. Uh, so uh, now it's not so hot. Uh, just a little bit uh, cold. So the start of the summer, actual summer was not as good as the, the spring was. So we had a fabulous spring this year. Um, are you having problems with the coronavirus? Uh, well, uh, of course uh, uh, we, we do. And um, so it's uh, like um, about, um, 2,000 uh, people uh, in Krasnoyarsk territory has been uh, uh, diagnosed with uh, coronavirus. So three and a half million people live uh, in the territory. So about 2,000 people. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the ratio is like this and about 20 people who died. So things are like this, but still the all the precautions are there and the uh, everything is like everywhere. So most of the places are closed, but they are trying to open it uh, these uh, weeks uh, in, in June and maybe in the end of June. So things are like the same everywhere. Well, were you teaching online this spring yes. or not? You were? Yes, online, yeah. And uh, I don't know, what's your experience about teaching online? Did you like it? I bet you did. <laughs> you know, um, I'm a technology geek, so you're right. Yeah. Uh, asking yeah. the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, uh, actually, for all of you to know that Beata Jones is the one who made up this event even before uh, anybody knew how to go online, really, people. Yes, she made it up in January when there was nothing like this in the world. And then Beata, who is an IT uh, genius, <laughs> and so she made it up and then she tried uh, to start negotiations about it. And so, but now we are here like doing it like 
what we do every day when in the beginning it was just a visionary <laughs> idea of Beata. So I'm very grateful to you. Honors pioneers over here. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have nearly 60 people joining us already, so we'll go ahead and get started. So good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We have people from all over the world in Russia. Ahmed, I see you in Saudi Arabia. Tinika, I see you in the Netherlands and all over the US. So thank you for joining us early for this session. My name is Rob and I'm with the NCHC office along with a few other staff members on the call. We're so happy to have you join us for another NCHC virtual meeting. Of course, today's presentation will be on visual thinking and honors education presented by our guest facilitator, Maria Tarasova of Siberian Federal University in Russia. Before we get started, I just wanna go over a few housekeeping items. As a default, please mute yourself if you're not speaking. This will prevent disruptive background noises and will reduce the bandwidth used. So for those of us joining us on the phone, you can mute yourself using your phone's mute button as well. If you're having technical issues, one thing to try is to turn off your video to reduce the bandwidth. And we wanna remind you that this session is being recorded for future viewing. And if you have any other questions during the presentation, please utilize the chat box here. And I, along with our other staff members, will be moderating those questions over to our facilitator during her Q&A session. So with that being said, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Maria. Oh, thank you so much, thank you. So uh, today I'm uh, thrilled at uh, the prospect uh, to speak to you all at our virtual uh, meeting uh, organized by National uh, Collegiate Honors Council uh, and advanced uh, technology enables us together and uh, seek uh, together the new ways uh, uh, to better honors education, to benefit our student. And I'm very grateful to my colleagues at the NCHC for an amazing opportunity to discuss the topic, uh, which I believe can become an important part of the agenda in honors practice and uh, theory. Uh, so um, my uh, goal today is uh, to start uh, the dialogue about uh, uh, visual thinking in honors education and to let you consider uh, the reasons, methods and advantages of developing visual thinking of your our students. Uh, in the Arts College of Siberian Federal University, I teach the course uh, Visual Thinking to all our students and the course uh, is uh, one semester long in the broad university context. Uh, the course was uh, adapted to the needs of engineering education and included in the curriculum of various uh, engineering programs, uh, for example, international program in engineering CDIO. Uh, but I believe uh, that uh, visual thinking uh, should be integrated into arms programs of all universities uh, because it represents the skill essential for students of all majors and specialists in all fields of endeavor. Uh, as uh, we all know, the uh, honors programs uh, in universities are uh, formed according to a certain ideal uh, pattern of an individual with uh, skills, competences, and strengths essential for a successful career uh, in any professional field uh, in the 21st century. What skills are uh, included in this uh, uh, ideal uh, pattern? They are the so called uh, skills of the 21st century. And uh, I would uh, like uh, to point uh, uh, in this list uh, that uh, improving various kinds of uh, students' thinking skills is uh, particularly important and uh, it accords well uh, with goals of uh, honors education. Uh, when we draw our attention to improving students' thinking skills, uh, we begin by asking what is thinking. And uh, among uh, thinking criteria, four of them stand out and deserve our special attention. Abstractness, uh, validity, awareness, and rationality. And uh, 
in other words, uh, they mean that if you are a good thinker, you know how to focus uh, your attention on the main thing. You can relate uh, your ideas to practice. You can reflect and manage your own thinking and you can reason. In the 21st century, uh, the fast uh, developing and constantly changing world demands uh, thinking to be flexible, critical, creative, and therefore productive. And uh, um, the balance um, between verbal and nonverbal thinking is uh, highly valuable today when the information we get process and then generate often appears in a non-verbal form. In fact, the thinking is uh, synthetic, synthetic and this is what uh, scholars of psychology uh, know and they know how to prove it and they have proved it. So verbal and nonverbal thinking constitute uh, different cuts of any subjective reality. And uh, in this case, uh, visual thinking is uh, just one kind of nonverbal thinking together with uh, audio, tactile thinking, etc. So, and the uh, visual thinking is a very uh, interesting uh, element. It is a bridge, it is a product of synthesis of pre previous sensual experience and abstract verbal activity. So, uh, consider uh, the fact that human thinking is uh, uh, synthetic. Uh, it gives a psychological uh, background for uh, focusing educational attention on developing uh, this uh, balance, thinking balance in uh, human uh, mind. Uh, the theory of uh, developing uh, visual thinking uh, of uh, university students emerged uh, in the USA in papers and uh, practical work by Rudolf Arnheim, who worked in Harvard in the uh, middle of uh, the 20th century. And uh, Arnheim noted that though popular uh, philosophy insists on division of perception and thinking. It is actually wrong because the truth is that perceiving and thinking collaborate in cognition. And uh, uh, now let me uh, introduce you to some um, uh, basics of uh, visual thinking. Uh, the visual thinking is a mental operation of iconic images and symbols. It is the mind activity based on operation of perceptual spacious structured schemes. And uh, uh, visual thinking provides insight into the phenomena manifested by the visual model. And uh, to make an object visible means to grasp its essential traits and uh, uh, to see the elusive structure. And uh, when uh, uh, we deal with image making, uh, we actually uh, get closer to making sense of the world. And um, the universe of the picture space always has its uh, visual logic. Uh, for instance, if we uh, take a look at the first initial uh, logical steps uh, of uh, visual thinking, uh, we see that they are analysis, schematization, and synthesis, putting in context. The object is singled out, then uh, simplified uh, as a pure geometrical structure, and then put in context and included in the field, visual field as a whole. And uh, in classes on visual thinking, uh, we learn uh, how to uh, reflect on those logical steps and how to manage the thinking process and uh, its results. So uh, the main function of visual thinking, I think, is uh, its ability to coordinate different meanings of images into a complete visible picture. And visual thinking also helps us to make the results of abstract verbal thinking intellectually visible. So um, 
then uh, of course uh, we have to uh, um, find uh, the best tool to teach uh, visual thinking and the best form of visual thinking which can be accessible and uh, effective for any uh, student who is uh, for any human being who is willing to create this balance of his uh, synthetic uh, thinking skills and uh, art is a form of uh, visual thinking of course and uh, i um for me uh I'm an art historian, and uh, for me, it's a thing that goes without uh, uh, saying, but uh, those who uh, do research in this area, for instance, uh, Rudolf Arnheim, whom I quoted before, he takes uh, pains uh, to uh, prove that artists are thinkers and uh, they are thinkers and this is thinking because artists are able to penetrate deeply into the invisible structures of different kinds of reality and this is actually the uh, uh, reason of uh, cognizing in any field and not less than scientists the results are as productive and uh, as uh, deep as uh, in any science and the rationality of an artist or an engineer artists and engineers are people who are most obviously use their visual thinking in their work but we use our visual thinking every day this is uh, how we get our uh, how we get into visible uh, fields of our reality so uh, iconical representatives of external or inner objects such as graphs, diagrams, special science structures. These are elements of uh, visual thinking uh, used uh, either in art or in other forms of uh, visual thinking. And a work of art is more than illustration of some event or uh, some kind of uh, a thing. An abstract pattern of form uh, is always embedded in the image and through its particular appearance, the pattern represents the nature of the kind of things. So the point, the difference between uh, the event and the picture of the event is the picture of the event is about the essence of it. And uh, um, for, for example, what we see here is a very um, good uh, uh, photograph. It's a piece of photographic art. And uh, uh, what we see are children's faces, and they are seen above the borders of the ascending uh, staircase. And together, they can be uh, uh, seen as a spiral of curiosity, which is a visual concept of infinite uh, learning. And uh, so if verbal thinking deals with concepts, visual thinking deals with visual concepts. And visual concepts uh, uh, get into the nature of things as, as well as uh, uh, verbal uh, thinking uh, too, but it gives this um, uh, visibility and uh, the moment when we can see the nature of things, not just understand it. So um, art contribute uh, to the development of reasoning and imaginative human being. That's what uh, Rudolf Arnheim believed in, and that's why arts shouldn't be neglected in education uh, because arts are the most powerful means of strengthening the perceptual component without which productive thinking is impossible in any field of endeavor and productive thinking creative thinking is what uh, uh, the uh, uh, what, what the demand for uh, thinking is in uh, our time i think uh, so, uh, if uh, visual art uh, is a, a learning tool, uh, then uh, uh, we have to um, understand uh, its advantages. Uh, art is a universal language and vi visual thinking is interdisciplinary. And uh, visual art enhances visual thinking of students of all majors and because um, 
honors uh, education is about uh, uh, learning experience which engages students of all specializations and uh, all uh, different uh, interests uh, in uh, either science or in uh, learning uh, and they are actually considered to be uh, excellent students, the best students. So of course they have to get uh, access to the best learning practices and uh, visual art is a learning tool to create one of the um, most um, effective uh, um, uh, learning uh, experiences. Uh, so um, if we compare uh, the values of uh, arms education and uh, the values of uh, as the ideal uh, visual thinker, uh, we can see uh, a lot of similar ideals. Values that accord in terms of agency, for example. Visual thinkers are the managers of their worldview, and they construct a clear picture out of chaotic material perceived in the visible field. Uh, what also is uh, very interesting for me is to see the correlation in interdisciplinarity. The interdisciplinary principle of arms education correlates with metacognitive nature of visual thinking, that is the skill active and helpful in various spheres of inquiry. And the developed visual thinking enables its owner to see the structural analogy in biological, astronomical, geological, and psychological even uh, objects. Uh, so um, among the features identified uh, by uh, all of us and those who uh, worked in honors education before uh, in the honors, uh, ideal honors student, uh, we see the intention towards uh, strengthening interpersonal and interpersonal abilities. And I think that the course uh, Visual Thinking answers this quality as it allows the students to develop their intellectual skills to understand and improve their own thinking as a synthetic creative process and to learn new strategies of communication with opinions and viewpoints of others, whether they are artists whose works they are communicating with or other students who have other ideas about the same uh, works of art. And uh, here is the question, why is it important to improve our students' visual thinking? Uh, visual uh, thinking is a skill uh, that uh, leads uh, our students of different uh, majors to enhancing their critical thinking, creativity, cognitive flexibility, and system thinking capacities by means of operating with visual models, comprehending and creating visual concepts. And uh, highly developed visual thinking implies improving various skills that are embedded into uh, critical thinking, such as envisioning, reflection, questioning and explaining, evaluation and expression. And uh, uh, so uh, now I will tell you more about what do classes in visual thinking look like and uh, what we do uh, to achieve all the goals uh, and to get this theory into practice uh, in uh, uh, our uh, learning reality. Uh, so uh, of course uh, in my course, um, in honors classes uh, during the course, students progress in their visual thinking skills by means of communication with pieces of uh, visual art. And by this communication, they learn to analyze, synthesize, grasp the essentials, understand compositional principles that structure artworks as visual forms of thought. Uh, so this is just um, one uh, 
example of uh, uh, the class where uh, students are engaged in drawing. They uh, draw the concepts and they actually uh, deal in recreation of the creative process which uh, preceded the uh, painting Black Square by Kazimir Malevich and uh, without knowing it that they recreate the process the artists were going through and so they consider the visual concepts of brightness and blackness light and darkness and uh, the meaning of the uh, black color coming on uh, this uh, uh, bright uh, light of colors multicolored uh, picture. Uh, some classes on visual thinking take place at uh, museums and galleries. Uh, for instance, in this slide, uh, you see our students at the set of a German art exhibition, which took place in Krasnoyarsk uh, Museum Center. And there, um, the creativity is uh, very well developed when you deal with products of other people's creativity. And of course, artists are the, the people who are creative. And uh, so dealing with uh, their uh, products uh, is uh, inspiring. Uh, but uh, in artist classes on visual thinking, uh, the strategy of active learning is employed on campus uh, as, well, as well, because uh, not only in classrooms, but uh, on campus, as a, uh, the campus as a whole becomes the learning environment. And the architecture of the university campus turns into a learning tool and an object for studying uh, visual thinking. Uh, before we go uh, into uh, taking uh, a piece of university architecture as an object of our attention for this educational reflection, we study visual thinking in architecture on great examples of it. And the objectives of such classes uh, are to learn how to detect compositional schemes in architectural objects, to draw them, to learn the language of geometry and apply it to architecture, and to learn how to translate geometrical figures of architectural compositional schemes into the language of visual concepts, and to see the building as a visual concept. That's a very uh, important. For example, uh, the visual concepts of conflict and contest in the elliptical compositional scheme of Colosseum. Uh, you see now the computer model, the uh, present state of Colosseum in Rome and the visual um, structure of it, which is ellipse. And ellipse with the, its two focuses is the embodiment of the concept of conflict, uh, the struggle, the war and the contest. And so this uh, uh, relates to the function of the building. And uh, so the students learn how the geometry of the building makes the idea of the building clear. Or in Pantheon, also in Rome, Italy, the visual concepts of entity, infinity, and divine perfection in the circular compositional scheme uh, is uh, revealed. Uh, are revealed, and here we see uh, the uh, scheme, uh, the uh, building from the aerial uh, point of view, and the building's exterior and interior, and so the power of one center uh, in comparison with two centers, two focuses of ellipse, and uh, there is no uh, conflict here but only the uh, entity and uh, uh, the uh, power of this infinite uh, uh, light coming from this uh, center, from this dot into this uh, uh, circle emanating uh, downwards as a light. So uh, 
then we uh, go back after studying these uh, masterpieces of architecture uh, we go back to the architecture we are dealing with and you see now the campus the fragment of the campus of Siberian uh, Federal University and uh, so I will tell you now about uh, the uh, research uh, our student Anastasia Bondareva she did uh, uh, it is called architectural visual thinking in real estate management. So she is uh, from the School of Construction and Engineering. She is studying real estate, and uh, so she was uh, taking the course uh, of visual thinking in Arnos College. And so the idea of projects in Arnos College here is to combine uh, the hard uh, skills and the soft skills, with visual thinking being the soft skill, and to um, answer the question why should the real estate manager have this visual thinking skill it was one of the objective of uh, this research so uh, sh um, we began by studying the structure of the buildings which uh, comprise the architectural complex of the university here are the interiors of halls of the university and we see the repetition of rectangular and square schemes uh, in these halls uh, in these uh, buildings uh, in general and even in the design of the floor uh, in the hall. So the square is uh, repeated. And uh, so, for instance, this composition, it was analyzed by the student as the uh, visual model of the ideal learning process, how different fragments, uh, they are not uh, equal, uh, they are different in shape, they are so um, um, fragmentary but then they come together inside this frame and uh, so the unity of students with diverse learning demands and interests they come together in this uh, um, process which is the learning process in the university so the characteristics of the square revealed uh, it is uh, the figure which embodies order structure unity wisdom intelligence and rationalism and uh, then uh, the um, scheme of the campus was uh, analyzed again and uh, the square was uh, revealed in various architectural forms uh, the yards uh, uh, between the buildings and uh, then uh, we came to the idea that the whole um, uh, campus is structured according to this uh, form uh, which makes the university some kind of a rational uh, um, temple. If Pantheon was the the, uh, the religious building, and it was about this infinity and perfection, divine perfection. Here we have a rational structure about uh, the structure which gives order to the uh, unity, uh, order and unity to these uh, diverse elements inside of it. And uh, so then. Uh, coming back to this uh, uh, real uh, estate uh, uh, manager competences. So when the manager is able to understand the, the uh, building not only as object, but as an act uh, architectural piece of art, then uh, the uh, its functional analysis becomes different. Its uh, um, attitude, his attitude or her attitude, I mean the manager, uh, becomes uh, also different. And then uh, the one of the conclusion was that uh, this uh, visual thinking skills should be integrated into this uh, a set of uh, skills uh, uh, necessary for this uh, kind of a manager. Uh, so um, it, what is important in classes on visual thinking is uh, educational reflection. So the first example was the uh, uh, analysis of the building of the university. So what you see in a university, uh, what is around you, uh, how is it integrated into your learning process? We ask the question, what does the building of the university teach you? And here is another kind of art sculpture. This is an art object uh, on campus. It's called transformation. And uh, I, we uh, had some classes um, dedicated to it. 
And uh, so again, the question was, what does an art object on campus teach you? How do you understand it? What is it made of? And uh, of course, it's about focusing attention on some uh, focal point uh, that can guide your learning process uh, better. So we studied the art objects on uh, other of other universities, for instance, uh, these are on MIT campus, and uh, this is Big Sale by Alexander Calder in MIT uh, in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And so uh, we analyzed this piece of art and saw how this idea of, uh, well, the Big Sale is uh, about these prospects of uh, brighter future for graduates of this um, uh, great uh, university and the sculpture is about this uh, technological progress these uh, engineering students can bring into the world and how they can be as imaginary this visionary as uh, Alexander uh, Calder himself and uh, um, the uh, honors classes uh, uh, we uh, tried to, to make an art educational reflection on the sculpture which is there in Krasnoyarsk and then we made the comparison and uh, then we asked question what should an art object do on university campus how can it teach uh, us uh, what we are about to learn what we are about to teach there if we are learners or teachers and actually then uh, the model of an art object uh, some uh, um, future uh, maybe uh, for the university it was made by students during a visual thinking workshop so this is just what students did uh, in their own modeling uh, again it's it is made like transformation from different elements of uh, uh, the book the bird the, the snake uh, and they all come together uh, as some elements of uh, the necessary components of the learning process in this uh, students model uh, so, uh, and uh, the, the last uh, uh, but not the least uh, element of uh, what I want to tell you today uh, about uh, other classes uh, uh, that uh, we do um, on visual thinking is how we teach systems thinking. Because the aim of thinking is to model the world, not to mirror it in all its details. And systems thinking enables to see the world as a whole whole formed by the set of integrated systems. So uh, visual thinking skills uh, that contribute to the development of systems thinking are analysis, analogy, synthesis, generalization, completing the incomplete, and grasping the essentials. These are just nine skills uh, and they are uh, much more and um, different classes are devoted to different uh, skills mentioned here and uh, so the questions that students deal with uh, when uh, they um, work with this uh, with improving these skills uh, they are based on pieces of art as models of the world uh, for instance here the question goes how many elements uh, uh, do you see and what are they uh, the synthesis uh, we started the um, improving a synthesis by uh, dealing with an arch as um, a concept um, it is uh, the idea which came to Leonardo da Vinci's mind that arch is the concept of strength comprised by two weaknesses. Uh, and so we studied this idea on architecture first and then came to compositional arches in art as visual concepts of unity, togetherness, and conflicts. How two characters coming together to make something synthetic as to make something uh, new, a new whole. Uh, together they make a new visual concept than they have uh, when they are apart. And uh, for instance, uh, when we train on a separate, in a separate uh, class, when we train analogy, uh, I ask the question, what similar elements do you see? What uh, makes them similar? And this gives uh, absolutely uh, great, amazing insights uh, into paintings and 
uh, it uh, enables the student to operate their thinking um, better and better. Uh, seeing the structure, of course, we draw. We uh, draw a lot. Uh, and uh, for instance, what geometrical scheme do you see in the picture? And this is actually a slide from the exam, which I had a few days ago uh, with our students. And they were brilliant in detecting the triangle and the square inside the square in the picture by Edward Hopper. And uh, so generalization is also uh, a very uh, good uh, um, part of uh, visual thinking. And the name of a piece of art, sometimes it's a general idea. Like in this case, I don't know if you can guess, uh, but my students did, they didn't know the piece and they said uh, bright thoughts. And this is actually the, the, uh, the it is Russian, the piece of art is Russian, uh, but uh, it's almost uh, the exact uh, version of uh, the name uh, of the uh, piece. And so he made it with different uh, uh, sculptures. Uh, and well, there is irony, of course, uh, in this case, but Bright Thoughts uh, is the, the, really the name of uh, the piece. And uh, uh, the piece of art is a system and uh, uh, for example, uh, these kind of questions uh, go uh, when we uh, learn the uh, whole, the system as a whole and uh, the system as a number of uh, systems inside of it. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, question uh, shows the difference between um, systems uh, in art and uh, in engineering because the different idea of movement uh, is embodied here. The practical, the physical movement and unpractical and uh, immaterial movement in the piece of art by Marcel Duchamp. Uh, compositional formulas uh, teach uh, students uh, to see this geometrical structure inside the piece of art. So I showed you in Colosseum or in Pantheon uh, very simple geometrical figures like ellipse and uh, uh, the circle. Uh, here we are dealing with discus throw, uh, an ancient uh, sculpture, uh, Greek uh, sculpture by Miron. And here we have compositional formulas of bow and arrow and lyre, and they come together and they show this, um, the ancient sport as both the construction of a beautiful human body and destruction like athletes were made for wars. So these two um, uh, elements uh, of a human being and an athlete uh, are combined together and they form the idea of uh, what we see. Again, a piece of art as a model and not as the reflection of, I mean, the mirror of, uh, of what we see. So as for learning outcomes, and I know that some of you asked me this question before the webinar, uh, in the course, uh, the RN students, uh, uh, they acquire the skills of expressing ideas, of implementing ideas, uh, the abilities of argumentation because they have to defend their point of view. What is the visual concept? Why do you think uh, it is so? And uh, uh, this uh, trains the abilities of argumentation. They learn modes of constructing visual concept and comprehending it. And that's how they improve their uh, pr uh, process of transferring uh, visible field into structured viewpoint, worldview. And this is priceless, actually, because uh, our honors uh, program in general, and this course in particular, is about the skills uh, which are interdisciplinary and uh, which can uh, make a impact on personal development first of all and uh, if uh, we develop the person then uh, I believe he can or she can achieve uh, in any uh, profession and uh, so of course they progress in critical visual thinking and visual literacy. 
And so I conclude uh, uh, my presentation with some uh, slides on further reading, but I will give uh, this presentation to uh, Rob and he will send it uh, to you. So um, if you are interested in some further reading, then you will be uh, able to go through this list. And uh, right now I'm, I thank you for the, uh, for your attention and um, I'm ready to answer your questions. All right, right off the bat, I think you kind of touched on this just now. People were inquiring about further readings to do an analysis of their own campus. So thank you for that. Um, another question we had, Specifically about the analysis of your campus that you did, are there any recommendations for going forward of doing their own analysis on their own campus? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, some uh, recommendations how to do that? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so um, uh, we um, started um, with um, the building. Uh, the uh, architecture. So for me, actually, when I was uh, dealing with that, I was just uh, trying to make uh, students uh, look around with attention and uh, uh, focus on what they see as, uh, an, uh, as an educational um, tool. Uh, so everything, I told them that everything you see around uh, should teach you something because if it is, uh, well, uh, this is actually, I think what we see now, it's a great uh, architecture. And uh, I think a great architecture is when uh, the form and the function coexist, go together. So if it is a hospital, it should cure. If it is a, a university, it should teach. Architecture should go along with its function. So uh, you start by asking these kind of questions and uh, then you make the composition analysis and uh, you understand how the building makes you walk how what what parts is it made of, uh, how it regulates your uh, movements, uh, the uh, construction, uh, what is it like. Then we focused our attention on some focal points on campus, such as uh, uh, sculptures, for example, and uh, uh, like uh, here I told you about uh, this art object which recently appeared on campus of our university. And again, so what what is it about? Why did they place it here? Uh, is it uh, some kind of a teacher for you? Is it you yourself? Is it an ideal image of a learner or um, a, a teacher, a human being? So actually the second the name of this sculpture is Thinker. And uh, so we have come to uh, understand here that this uh, giant head uh, is uh, the uh, mind, the model of a human mind with all memories of previous cultural periods of development of civilization integrated into it. And what is knowledge is like uh, remembering for each of us what happened before us. And then there is a, a prospect of transformation, like it is the second and the first name of it, transformation. And uh, so how we still can progress uh, by using what we had when we started our journey in life and in learning and in culture. So uh, uh, then you can uh, maybe uh, find the place of these uh, objects uh, in the university and uh, uh, understand how, again, it regulates uh, students' attention, what it means to say. So the uh, art is uh, your companion in communication. Uh, you can start the dialogue with it and uh, it can uh, talk to you. In our case, it can teach you something. Awesome. Um, another question people are wondering, if a lot of campuses are going to continue teaching online in this next school year, do you have any recommendations on incorporating more visual projects and assignments in that way? Uh, 
even if it's in, through an online course? Oh, you mean, uh, I, I mean, uh, <laughs> the one who is asking uh, the question. Uh, so um, in, in our university, uh, I have this visual thinking course online. Um, I was mostly, um, well, we of course uh, discussed everything online with uh, students, but I also shared some videos, pre-recorded videos uh, uh, of some, um, research on visual thinking of some experiments uh, which you know we had in museums uh, etc but uh, do you think the the uh, person who is asking the question means uh, some um, integrating this visual thinking course into some global uh, honors educational community I think um, her question could go either way and either how to directly facilitate that through an online course or kind of using this to build onto a different one. So I think there are a lot of possibilities, like you had said. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, someone had asked on your, how do you feel about the use of traditional versus digital media within these Oh courses. yes, that, yes, that was uh, uh, an interesting question. Um, and uh, I'm an art historian and as an art historian, uh, I, I'm, I know that media is not important. Uh, artists can do a work of art in any media, digital or uh, just uh, colors, uh, using colors and uh, applying them to canvas, uh, or like in this case, what we see dealing with some metal. So uh, it really doesn't matter. Uh, what makes a work of art is this uh, combination of form and content. And when the uh, artist is creating the model of the world uh, which uh, uh, integrates a human being in relationship with the world inside and if we see in a work of art this uh, remarkable uh, amazing new peculiar just strange maybe horrifying but uh human relation to the world and it is honest and uh, it is uh, it is crafty it is done well so um and then it is a work of art. So in, in Russian language, we actually have a very good uh, um, anal analysis of the word art, but it is, uh, it is uh, longer. <laughs> it's not just three words. Uh, but anyway, if I can do the same, so art is when it's something artificial, so created, then art it is when it is artful, it is crafty, it is, it is done uh, very well, and art is when it is uh, uh, attracts uh, uh, you and uh, it is appealing to you and it makes you transform yourself in some way, in uh, uh, in any way, it doesn't matter if it is in a huge way or in a, uh, just slightly, but uh, still uh, make some transformation uh, in you. If all three ingredients are there, uh, then it is art. Maybe you still need an art uh, historian <laughs> to tell you so. Uh, that's why I'm there. Uh, but uh, still, uh, the media uh, is never of importance. And of course, we are dealing with both traditional and uh, digital art, if it is necessary. Awesome. I think we have time for one more question. Should visual thinking be a standalone course or can it be embedded as a component in another honors course? Oh, that's a, a great question because uh, I think that uh, uh, visual uh, thinking can be integrated into so many uh, various uh, courses. Uh, but um, I, uh, in, in my case, uh, the way um, I construct it and uh, the way I see it, I know that uh, in, if we are talking about integration, then uh, we are talking about at least two people 
two teachers working together uh, because uh, we need a specialist uh, in uh, uh, visual arts and then we need a specialist in some uh, different uh, field like for instance biology and then we can understand what uh, would uh, students of biology mostly need for their own um, um, or learning uh, in uh, terms of developing their specific uh, visual thinking. But uh, as it is now, uh, I would say that I consider visual thinking as a, a separate course, but um, offered to students of all specialization and that's why that's why i as i said before i uh, believe that for arnas education it works uh, uh, better than uh, for anything else uh, because we are here dealing with the combination of students from uh, uh, different uh, spheres absolutely well, everyone, as we approach the end of the hour, I just want to thank all of you for joining us and especially thank you, Maria, for putting on this presentation. As uh, we had said before, we will be sending out a recording of this presentation as well as um, the slides of the presentation that Maria graciously offered to send out to everyone. And there's been a lot of great resources shared within the chat as well. So a transcript of the chat will be uploaded onto our NCHC discussion board as well, dealing around this topic. So we thank you once again for joining us. Maria, thank you so much for making the time and doing this at nearly 10 o'clock now over in Russia. So <laughs> we appreciate everyone being here and I'll let you close. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm very grateful to you. Thank you for hosting me. I was uh, so happy to see you all. Thank you, goodbye. Thank you everyone. <laughs>